insights for the individual investor. Today is Tuesday, August 30th, 2011. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Tim Staunt, and I'll be hosting today's program. Today we'll be joined by MF Global Senior Market Strategist Dennis Cahigas. Today he will be discussing the MACD. He will go over the basics of the MACD, and he will also discuss swing trading utilizing the MACD. Now, if you lose audio or video feeds during the program, please log out and log back in. Keep in mind there might be a slight delay when the charts are being shared because of the size of the files being transmitted, but that's very normal. If you would like to ask a question, please utilize the chat box in the right-hand side of your screen. Please don't hesitate to wait till the end, but you will not get to the questions until the end of the presentation. Today's webinar is part of our ongoing effort to educate investors and traders about futures. And if you'd like to be notified about similar events, please register at the link you see on the screen, mfglobal.com, individual trading, trading advice, events. You can stay in touch with MF Global through Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Please feel free to check out our archived webinars at our blog at letstalkfutures.com. Please also feel free to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Dennis actually gives a FX and interest rate futures market update every other week, so you can find him there as well. Like I said, Dennis is a senior market strategist. If you're interested in trading futures with him, we do have a special offer of half-off commissions for 30 days when you open a new account. Please keep in mind that today's webinar takes place at a specific time, and any opinions or recommendations given by Dennis can be changed without notice at any time. Futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and therefore is not suitable for all investors. And of course, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Today's webinar will last approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Dennis will spend some time on his commentary and once he has completed it, he will take your questions. Again, please use the IM box in the right hand corner of the screen. Dennis will answer as many questions as he possibly can at the end of his presentation. Um, you know, staying conscious of your time, we can't guarantee you will get to all the questions, but we'll handle as many as possible. If Dennis does not answer a particular question, we strongly encourage you to contact him directly. Please jot down his email and phone number on the above screen. His contact information will also be up again at the end of the presentation. This webinar will also be archived at our letstalkfutures.com blog. Um, so if you miss anything today or you want to review it again, you can go ahead and, and go there. It's going to be at letstalkfutures.com forward slash webinar archives. On that note, good afternoon, Dennis, and we appreciate you coming out. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate uh, uh, everybody's attendance here today. Um, as Tim mentioned, we uh, will be happy to take questions. Um, if for some reason I don't have enough time to reach them all, Please feel free, if you have something specific actually, please feel free to, to contact me at my trade desk. And then without further ado, let's start off here. Starting off here, uh, the moving average convergence divergence, uh, before we get into it, let's actually break down to see uh, where it came from and what it is. Uh, to start off, uh, the moving average uh, convergence divergence was created by Gerald Appel in 1960s. Um, it did not gain popularity though until about 198 in the mid 1980s when the MACD histogram was developed by Thomas Aspie. Uh, it actually provided a very good way to anticipate crossovers in the MACD, which when we get into later, we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate exactly how that's used um, and uh, why it's so useful. It's actually become one of the major tools that a lot of FX uh, traders use uh, to, uh, to analyze the markets. Lastly, uh, as I started to mention, the MACD is often used by, by traders to identify trend changes as well as strength of momentum. Um, the nature of it actually makes it inherently use, very useful and, and powerful for swing trading, and we'll get into that uh, shortly. So let's break it down. What exactly is moving average convergence divergence? Well, uh, starting off, it, it's actually the difference or represents, uh, the indicator represents uh, the difference between two weighted moving averages a fast moving average and a slow moving average. Uh, these are the moving weighted moving averages of closing prices. Uh, you can see it on the, just a general representation on the right, you'll see the two moving averages represented there by the, uh, the two different lines. Uh, they are similar to just a normal moving average uh, that you would see on a chart. The, the power comes in, in how you use the, the two differences. 
Uh, you'll also notice that there is a bit of a histogram there um, uh, that is a bit, effectively a trigger line or signal line created by uh, smoothing the result with another weighted moving average. Um, and then, of course, in general, it is one of the major uh, oscillators that is a centered oscillator. Um, specifically, it uh, indicates shifts in trend changes or momentum. Uh, momentum is effectively what you're trying to analyze or, or find as you are doing swing trading. Before we get any farther, let's also look to see what exactly the uh, pitfalls are uh, for using the MACD. A MACD is actually a very powerful and useful indicator, but it is a lagging indicator, um, as, as um, are most indicators. So as we look for it, uh, we do want to bear in mind that it, it will lag the price action uh, by a bit. Um, however, there are ways you can use to anticipate that. The MACD is also very useful in all mar uh, market condition types, but uh, is most useful for volatile markets. So obviously, uh, the bigger, the, the more volatile the markets or the bigger the swings that you may have in a market, the more useful and more powerful it becomes as far as uh, gaining and gauging uh, the, the strength and momentum. Finally, traders should be, use, should be careful not to mix signals when forming their trade strategies. For example, uh, when you're using a swing trade or a momentum-based trade, you want to make sure that your exit strategy is also based on momentum as opposed to time or price. Now, that's different from risk management in which you may want to protect profits or the account, but as far as uh, uh, judging when you want to uh, exit or, or, uh, your, your trade, that should be based on momentum. So let's uh, break down our types of signals. There are basically three uh, major types of signals that you can uh, get, uh, gain from the uh, MACD. The first one is a moving average crossover. The second one being a center line crossover. And uh, also those uh, a positive and negative divergence. So let's break it down, starting off with a moving average crossover. This uh, occurs when the fast and slow moving averages cross. So uh, we'll, we'll actually take a look a bit more in a second here, exactly what that means. Um, it is the moving uh, average crossover is actually the most common type of signal. Um, however, because it's so common, uh, I, I, I recommend that it be reinforced by another type of signal, either within the MACD or externally from, the, uh, from another indicator. Uh, it's just that because, uh, especially in volatile markets, you may get a lot of false signals. Uh, one type of, uh, of, of reinforcement indicator would be to look at the, the histogram on the MACD. This, so this is coming within the MACD uh, and look for a three bar confirmation on that price action. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I suggest on there. Now this is a, a perpetual chart from the US dollar. This is just an example. This one is not actually uh, recent uh, right now. I'll show you more recent charts re uh, near the end. But this is exactly what you want to be looking for when you're looking for a cent uh, moving average crossover. Uh, on the first indicator, you'll see in, in tan ovals or ellipses there, uh, a crossover, which is high, uh, you know, on the positive side of the, uh, uh, of the center line. But you see a move, the fast, the red and the green uh, lines crossing. That is your moving average crossover, suggesting that uh, you're seeing weakness in the charts. You'll, you see that again uh, reflected almost, uh, almost exactly there on the, on the price chart. We do see a top forming there on the price action. And then uh, the second example is the, the blue ellipse. You'll see the opposite side there. So this is going to be a bullish crossover. Uh, we see the fast one, uh, um, the fast uh, moving average. Uh, crossing the slow moving average, suggesting another trend change. Second type of indicator we're looking at is a center line crossover. This occurs when the MACD moves past the zero line. This is effectively on the histogram and into a positive, uh, opposite territory. So either negative to positive or positive to negative. This can be combined with other types of indicators also to confirm a signal. This one, uh, the center line crossover is the, is the second most common one. Uh, and finally, uh, you also want to take a look or analyze the slope of that histogram to reveal the relative strength or weakness of that market momentum. And let's break that down to see exactly what we're looking at. Again, this is the, the dollar index. This is uh, looking at two uh, sh uh, shifts in momentum for center line crossovers. Right there, uh, the first one is the tan ellipse again. Uh, you'll see a center line crossover uh, as, the as the histogram increases, going positive. Uh, on the upside, and that gives you a, a relatively good idea of how strong that market is. You can see that trend does 
continue to go through. Um, on the opposite side, we do have a, a crossover there as the MACD crosses the, the histogram there as well. The, the histograms bars are increasing in strength on the negative side, and uh, the slope is, is quite strong down. You'll also see, note, the uh, corresponding drop in the U.S. dollar market at the same time. In fact, it does gap through on the price action chart up above. And the last and least, uh, uh, least common one is the positive negative divergence. This occurs uh, when strength or weakness of the MACD differs from the price action of the market. It is the least common of all MACD signals, but also the most reliable uh, in terms of momentum shifts. And this is exactly what we are looking for here. This is a, uh, an example of a negative divergence. So uh, what we're looking for here is the uh, two orange lines on the histograms. I, I drew it on there so it, it makes it a little more easily to see. But uh, we have, starting off with the histogram, you'll see the beginning of that uh, orange line. We have uh, a high bar on the histogram. And on the next time we, we come up, it's a lower bar on the histogram. Um, on the price action at the same, on the concurrent time, you'll see a high, which corresponds to the high histogram or momentum in the, in, in the bottom. But then when we see weakening momentum on a lower high on the histogram, we see a divergence, which is a new high here in the price action. Effectively, what this translates uh, to be is that there's more buying coming in, but it's happening on, on, on weaker strength. So it, of course, is a, is a a bearish signal. And then finally, we also have multiple indicator signals here. So uh, this is how you combine them to actually get a, a better idea of exactly when a momentum shift may be occurring. So uh, starting off with a, with a tan ellipsis again, we have uh, a, a combination of several. We have actually a center line crossover, a moving average crossover. Uh, you know, which reinforces the, the, trend the trend shift. And then, of course, we have a rally from the lows of about 72 and a half, all the way up to uh, where we ran up to about 90 or so on the U.S. dollar. Um, within That suggests a major trend uh, shift. Um, you can also use it to analyze minor trend shifts. So we do see another one here as well. Um, on the blue ellipse, we have uh, uh, crossovers there as well uh, and uh, center line crossover as well. But let's make it a little bit more current, since these are somewhat old examples. And if you'll bear with me, I'll switch it to a, to a current chart. So right here, we have uh, a, a daily chart here of crude oil. This is a live chart. So we currently have crude oil trading at about 88.70. Um, several indicators that we're seeing here as we look at the, um, at the MACD. Uh, number one, we have a center line. We have a center line crossover as well as a moving average crossover indicated right here in early August. The corresponding price action does suggest that while we have it here, you'll see in the price action, this is the first big down day that we have. Look, uh, the next thing to notice is the slope. How steep is that shift in momentum? Well, we're coming from positive to negative. Not only do we go positive to negative, but it this is almost a 75 to 80 degree angle downwards. Um, the price action suggests that uh, this is going to come off quite strong. So uh, based off of a swing trade, uh, this would be your first indicator. And uh, as you look at momentum, you want to see a bottoming or a shift in that. We do see a shift as the histogram starts to weaken here. We also see a corresponding uh, strengthening in the markets here on the momentum. That is how you'd want to use the MACD to use multiple indicators to gauge a shift in momentum or to play a swing trade, if you will. You'll see the same sort of ones uh, moving forward here. Uh, actually, um, I'll draw a bit of a line here. So we have a divergence here within the same time frame. On the MACD, we have uh, strengthening momentum uh, in, in the market, but the price action is relatively weak. Then we have weak then the histogram or the MACD suggests that we are getting weaker here in the momentum, but the price action strengthens. That is, again, uh, classic negative divergence, which is one of our more reliable indicators suggesting there's a possible trend change. When we see that reinforced with the MACD switching 
and uh, it does suggest that that would be the, the, the beginning of that, of that uh, swing trade there. I'll uh, switch to one more chart here to, on the gold, which, I don't, where did we go here? Here, here's the gold. Um, looking for the same things here, this is, a, again, a live chart here, daily continuous chart of the gold. Um, kind of the same principles that we're looking for. So we're looking for, uh, right here we have uh, um, um, a divergence here uh, in, the, um, uh, in the histogram. So uh, I'll draw those lines. Even momentum, but price action is diverging from your momentum indicator. which suggests, suggests uh, a momentum shift. So uh, we have one more strong day, and then the moment, momentum does shift uh, coming on down, and we have a bit of a, a trend change. Now, uh, as I mentioned, it is for swing trading, and um, unfortunately it doesn't say if this is going to be a major trend shift or a minor trend shift, but it does suggest that it is a momentum shift, that the, the momentum shift is there. So it will allow you to, to play both minor swings and major swings in, in both the markets. And uh, that's all. I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, there is a question from Daya. I'll, I'll read that out. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I uh, apologize if I'm not. Uh, the question reads, which divergence is more reliable? Is it A, uh, price versus MACD line, or B, price versus MACD histogram? Um, the, what you're really looking at from the moving average convergence divergence is the, is the relative difference between the two moving averages. Uh, effectively, you know, is the fast uh, gaining on the slow or vice versa? So they're actually roughly going to be the same because the histogram is the is the visual representation of the difference between the two lines. Um, not to be too complicated, but uh, if there's any math people out there, it's effectively the Riemann sum of the difference of the two curves. I uh, hope that answers that. Uh, from Jill Z, are these patterns mainly relevant on a daily chart, or can you use them on, on, on an intraday chart? There, the MACD is actually um, um, useful for, for, for either one uh, due to the, the way the math is designed. It's actually useful for, for, for either one. Um, I use it actually uh, throughout for both, so it, it can be reliable. Please bear in mind, as the shorter time frame that you have uh, in the chart, the more sensitive it becomes to changes. So um, I do highly recommend that you pair uh, the MACD with other indicators to give you a much more reliable uh, signal as far as what's happening in the markets. Um, that being said, all, you know, I a, good, a good reinforcement would be volume and open interest. Obviously, uh, the math can be skewed if on a, on a, on a low volume day. Uh, from Jim Collins, is it a bounded oscillator? No, it is not a bounded oscillator. It is a centered oscillator. From uh, John Prickett, the uh, question is, where did you say that we can review this lesson later on? Um, uh, John, that will, be, that will be available for us on our archives. You can find that on our blog at letstalkfutures.com. Um, there is a page that's dedicated to webinar archives. Um, you can go there you know, within, within the hour after the webinar is done. From Jill Z, what other indicators would you suggest pairing it with for the intraday? Um, Jill, there's several ones that I like. I did mention the open interest volume. I think that is a, uh, would also help uh, give a little bit more insight, maybe complete the picture. Uh, as with all indicators, they help describe part of the story, but they never really do tell the whole story. Um, 
for for depending on the different markets, it may suggest some different ones or your style of trading. This is useful for string swing trading, but uh, if you'd like to discuss more, I'd be more than happy to, to speak with you uh, um, uh, in more detail at my trade desk. Okay, that looks like it's just about it. Um, four questions again. Definitely contact Dennis if you have anything you know that you, that you'd like to ask him that he didn't get to today. Um, we're also kind of taking suggestions about education and and what you would like to learn as a customer client um, on webinars. If you want to shoot us an email with a suggestion or any insight, please do that at social at mfglobal.com. If you'd like to call Dennis, his contact is right there eight six six. 631-6216 or shoot an email dkahigas at mfglobal.com. Again, you can find this webinar archived on our blog at letstalkfutures.com. If you're interested in trading futures with Dennis, we do have a special offer of half-off commissions for 30 days when you open a new account. You can join us again Thursday for our bi-monthly webinar where our senior market strategist Mike Sable will be continuing his education on options um, in his bi-monthly webinar, Opportunities and Options. Again, you can go to our website and our events page to sign up for that.